scientific research has shown that climate change is occurring more quickly than the worst case scenarios put forward by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, just a few years ago. Thus, many scientists and politicians realize it is imperative that we reduce the planet's temperature as expeditiously as possible. In the past, efforts to mitigate global warming have focused almost exclusively on lowering carbon dioxide emissions. But we know now that although reducing CO2 is critical, even if the entire world switched to a zero carbon economy and lifestyle today, it would take thousands of years for this gas to dissipate. Some scientists and politicians are realizing that limiting shorter-lived greenhouse gases such as methane and ozone and other contributors to warming such as black carbon, also known as soot, released into the air from burning biomass and fossil fuels are where major gains in slowing the heating of the earth can be made in a swift amount of time. As one climate scientist says, we need to reduce short-lived greenhouse gases today in order to ensure a livable planet for our children. And we need to reduce CO2 to ensure a livable planet for generations a few hundred years from now. Limiting these gases, particularly methane, is relatively inexpensive and rapid, whereas many of the technologies to reduce CO2 are either in their infancy or are costly and time-consuming to integrate into the current infrastructure. Scientific understanding of the role of livestock in accelerating global warming has increased as well. Some researchers are beginning to recognize that livestock contributes much more to global greenhouse gas emissions than the 18% estimated by the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization 2006 report, Livestock's Long Shadow. This report states that livestock raising is the number one source of human-caused methane. Methane, in turn, contributes to the creation of ozone. As livestock production and cultivating feed for these animals are both responsible for over 70% of rainforest destruction in the Brazilian Amazon, shifting to a plant-based diet can reduce black carbon particles landing on the ice such as Antarctica or the Andean glaciers by ending the forest burning done to clear space for farming and cattle grazing. We will begin by hearing what some of the world's top climate scientists and those in other scientific fields have to say about the urgency of quick action to halt climate change and then learn current information about the role of short-term greenhouse gases in lowering the Earth's temperature. It's hard for people to realize this because you don't notice much happening. Global warming is about one degree Celsius. Wit and weather variations are much larger than that from one day to another. So you don't notice that there's a crisis, but in fact, we are at a crisis point now because we are very close to passing tipping points in the climate system that would have very undesirable consequences. In fact, we've actually passed one tipping point, and that's the Arctic Ocean. We've already reached a point where we're going to lose all of the ice in the Arctic Ocean. We're already seeing record temperatures around the world, and with it, we're seeing species going extinct, we're seeing sea levels rise and coastal flooding, we're seeing spreading diseases, and we're seeing more extreme weather. What we're seeing now is just the beginning of what's predicted if we let things get worse. The IPCC, the UN climate panel, got it right. I mean, basically, operating on data that is now four or five years old, they made predictions about what the earth system, what the climate system would look like in the future. Now we have something like four or five years more data and it turns out that we're on their worst case trajectory or the worst case scenario that they defined or maybe even worse. While we knew uh, a lot of things were changing, we've, we've come to realize that they're actually changing much faster than we thought before. So we have much less time to actually act. 
Yes, certainly. We are threatening sustainability in the long run. Climate change is making fundamental changes to part of the system that we are totally dependent on. I am talking about ecosystems, both on land, terrestrial ecosystems, and also in the ocean, marine ecosystems. We are melting glaciers, which will affect the water supply to billions and billions of people, which will have to move because people don't live where there are no water. So we are creating or making a setup for social conflict on a grandiose scale. So very much threatening the sustainability of the globe. I have to say that some ecosystems are going to be impacted in a very serious way very soon and we have to do all what we can to curb climate change in order to avoid such huge damages which will put at risk our well-being, the well-being of humans. So who wants to take this kind of gamble with a laboratory called Earth? This is a gamble we cannot afford to lose. Yeah, we're really running out of time. In fact, I think this next year or two years are the critical time period. I certainly think unless we turn off the taps tomorrow, the world is going to continue to, to warm. We don't want that warming to run away, and so we have to do something about it. It will require changes in all of the greenhouse gases. There are about six. Methane is one, CO2 another, nitrous oxide, and some others. We know that short-lived carbon forcers like methane, black carbon, and tropospheric ozone contribute significantly to the warming of the Arctic. And because they are short-lived, they also give us an opportunity to make rapid progress if we work to limit them. Some 25 years ago, when the first IPCC report was done and the first meeting was held in Rio, the Earth Summit, climate change seemed very far away. And the big actor in the long term, of course, is carbon dioxide. But now that climate change is much more upon us and we're already seeing major impacts ecological impacts, particularly melting of glaciers and the sea ice disappearing and, and so on, we're realizing that we, it's not so far away and that we have to think about the immediate term as well as the long term. The science has also progressed substantially and we understand now that there are some shorter lived pollutants, greenhouse pollutants, that have an effect on climate in the shorter term. It's certainly true that in the long term we have to deal with carbon dioxide, but in fact, when I think about it for myself, the only way I can have an impact on the planet's warming in my lifetime is to deal with these shorter term things. Anything I do with CO2 may have an effect, but it won't have it for many, many years. Because the carbon dioxide that we put in the atmosphere will stay there, much of it, for more than a thousand years. And yet, the shorter-lived things, and methane is the most important of which, but it's not the only one, actually have bigger impact on warming today than CO2 itself. And the fact that they're shorter-lived means that if what we do now can have an immediate effect. So being short-lived makes them more important, particularly if there are things we can do quickly to reduce them. And one of the problems with CO2 is that many of the things we need to do are very difficult, expensive. It's intrinsically tied up with our energy systems, and energy is so important for every aspect of life. Uh, rich countries you know, run on fossil energy. Poor countries want to use more fossil energy because they need to develop. We need to learn how to reduce these things, but it's not going to be simple or cheap. On the other hand, these shorter-lived things, uh, like methane, some people have called low-hanging fruit, that is, they're available for us now with relatively smaller costs. And so that's another argument for methane, is that we can do something in the shorter term, and it's easier than with CO2. There are many things that people can do to reduce their emissions. If you eat further down on the food chain, rather than animals which have produced many greenhouse gases in, and used much energy in the process of growing that meat, um, you can actually make a bigger contribution in that way than just about anything. So that's, in terms of individual action, is perhaps the best thing you can do.